What's going on guys? Welcome to another AI session. So today I'd like to share some cool stuff I've learned about the main reason behind the rise of generative AI, which is the transformers or specifically speaking GPTs, generative pre-trained transformers. So these are deep learning models that can generate natural texts that are similar to human written text. And the groundbreaking moment for these models came about to be when a group of researchers at Google published a very renowned paper titled Attention is All You Need. So this paper has formed the basis for the modern day architecture of GPTs. And I recommend you go and then read more about the details behind this model because it's really, really interesting. So our main focus for today is to actually build a GPT from scratch. So basically what we see here is a simple implementation of a generative pre-trained model. So this model takes in a chunk of data set. This is actually a small data set, just four lines of sentences. And then what we want it to do is to predict the next word when given a prompt, which is actually taking, let's say, a part of the data set. So it's not easy to get the the right output but I was lucky enough to get this one so I've only been able to get one correct output which is this one so the quick brown so brown is the correct prediction or the correct word in this phrase that we gave it so yeah so what we will look at here is to actually understand what are the underlying features of a GPT as I define it here it's a dummy GPT so it just does these basic um, predictions. But fairly enough, it has some of the fundamental information that we need. So let's go into detail about what the coding entails here. So for example, here we are defining our class, which is uh, Domi GPT. And first of all, we import the libraries. The model was created using PyTorch. So we are using PyTorch here. And we're importing neural network from PyTorch. And as well, we're importing the optimization library from PyTorch as well. And next here, we define our, our class. And then we assign some input variables. So these are the four input variables. And we have the vocabulary size, the embedding size, hidden size, and the number of layers. So the vocabulary size is actually the number of unique characters or unique words in our data set or in each sentence as you can see here whilst the embedding size is actually the size of those unique words so the size of those unique words is what this input variable is defining here and then next we have the hidden size which is the which defines the units or let's say the neurons in our hidden layer and the last one is the number of layers, of course. This one is self-explanatory. And so what we're basically doing here is actually assigning to these input the um, methods from our neural network. For example, the one we import from, from um, how do you call it, to uh, PyTorch. So we are assigning the embedding to embedding and then the transformer to transformer. And then we have the linear um class which we are assigning to word hidden and the vocabulary size here so the same thing we did for the other two and then next we have our forward pass so forward pass it takes in a source and then a target and then we have our output here which is basically the source and the target of the transformer and next we define our data set so our data set is very small actually so we only have these four sentences which are strings of sentences and yeah i believe that's one of the reasons why it was difficult to get a correct prediction because the data set is too small and as the name implies it's a dummy gpt so it's not very very good at it at predicting and then next year we try to convert the numeric uh, the text into numerical data because we want the model to to get the numerical value of each let's say each letter in our data set so in order to do that we created these two uh, dictionaries so we have word to index and then our index to word 
wherein in this case the word is the key and then the values are the indices and then the second one the indices are the key and then the word is the value or the words are the values so what we do we just loop through each of the sentence in our data and then in that we also loop through each of the words and then try to split the sentence and we check if the word is available in the sentence if it's not then we assign the index value of that word and then we assign we assign it to our dictionary we do the same for sorry we do the same for for our index to word dictionary so we assign it as well and then next year we try to to get to cut let's say a chunk of the data which in this case we are caught in the last or the end part splice we're splicing it in javascript it will be spliced but here it's you split so the end and then the next one we store it in a variable x and then the next one we are having here is the y which in which we are getting off the 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 starting or the beginning of the sentence and we're looping through this sentence also in order to find the word so we just caught the first word for the second one and then here we caught the last word out and then next we define we assign some values to our parameters that we've already our input parameters so for example here we give these values 128 for embedding size hidden size 128 and a number of layers we just use one and then here now we will just instantiate our model for example, our class, dummy GPT class. So we instantiate it with all the inputs that we've assigned to it. And then we define our criterion, which we'll be, we will use to measure our loss. So we use the cross entropy loss in order to do that. And then after that, in order to calculate the value of that loss, we use the Adam optimization um, method. So in this case, we're using it. So optim.adam will give us that. And then our loss ratio there. And then the most important part, which is the training aspect of the model. So we are training the model here. First of all, we instantiate our optimizer value there to a zero gradient. And then next we output the model, which is the, the how do you call it? the variables we've assigned here to each of the splits. So for each sentence, we try to cut the first word for X and then for Y, we try to cut the last word for each sentence in there. And then we assign it there. Then we calculate the loss value and then we assign that value. Oh, sorry. And then we assign that value to our criterion, um, um, entropy function here so that will give us the backward loss and then next we have to optimize so this will be the loop for it so it will calculate the loss give it the back the backward value and then next it optimizes the value of that loss and then we will need to print each um iteration <laughs> in that in this case we have 100 so it will iterate from 0 to 99 let's say and then the last part is to actually define our prompt so we give it the prompt after we give it the prompt then we assign our prompt to the how do you call it to the tensor that we just created and then this will then search for the word in our data set and then try to predict that word based on the the training loop that we've created here and yeah so if the word is not if it's unable to predict the word sorry then it will return unknown which is this one but if it's there then it will just concatenate the prompt to the next word which we've seen here so this is actually our first lucky answer to, to this to this um, model and it's really interesting what it gave us. So if we change, we can change the prompt in order to get this. So let's just add, let's say brown. 
let's see what it will give us it's not easy to get it right I've been trying for quite some time now sometimes it will just return unknown okay as you can see here this one is returning unknown but if you keep on trying and trying over and over again you will be able to get something out of it and the main reason maybe for this is because of the data set is really really small so uh, <laughs> so this one it just says the quick brown once so we have a data set here that has once in it so yeah the last one so that was not bad actually that was not bad so yeah so this is quite fun to do actually so what i'll recommend is that i'll try to share the repo to you guys so you can go through and then try to optimize the code maybe you have some some knowledge of how to make it you know better so i'll recommend you do that and yeah this has been fun and also don't forget to go through the paper it's a really interesting paper and yeah that's all for today. See you in the next one.